Hello. I've looked everywhere. All right, I'm here now. I'll we'll just keep looking until we find it. Why is the furniture in the middle of the room? I know I packed it. I made a list. Star tip screwdriver. Look, it's checked. It's checked. Maybe uh, you threw it out with the newspapers you used to pack the dishes. I packed with bubble wrap. It's safer, and you can see through it. Of course you did. Sean, there's a hardware store up the road. You can buy a new one. I don't want a new screwdriver. I want my screwdriver. Stop it! It's the middle of the I'm sorry. I just shouldn't have yelled. Just, uh, let's just take a moment. Sit down, please. You know what? We can use this for now, okay? I can't stay here. Of course you can. It'll be fine. I can't stay here. The dishwasher doesn't dry. The shower drain has someone else's hair in it. And the crisper drawer keeps coming off the track. I assume that's what you were fixing? I forgot. Of course you forgot. It's understandable. You've been working your ass off. You're exhausted. You're under a lot of stress. There's a super in the building. You can <laughs> call him anytime. Just make a list of the things you need repaired. Later, Sean. Later. Later, Sean. Go to bed now. Go to bed. Thirty-six years old, twenty-two weeks pregnant. Ultrasound at sixteen weeks revealed a tumor on the fetus's tailbone. Mom's got anti-phospholipid syndrome. It makes surgery high risk. It also makes pregnancy high risk. She's had three miscarriages. We need to do an ultrasound and MRI to measure the tumor's growth rate. Dr. Parker, call services. Late bus doesn't explain why you're showing up tired after you just had twelve hours off. We're all tired. The last shift was thirty-six hours. I'm not interested in debating the shift schedule with you, but I am curious why you always feel the need to defend him. We're all on the same team. Yes, but you're all quarterbacks. And when training camp is over, there's only gonna be one starter. The crown rump length for the fetus is 21.5 centimeters. And the diameter of the tumor is 10.6 centimeters, half the size of the fetus. The tumor's grown. Now, it's not cancer, but it is monopolizing the blood supply, which is weakening the fetus's heart. I'm sorry, but there's no chance it would survive long enough to be viable. The safest course is to terminate the pregnancy. If we were interested in the safest course, we wouldn't be on our third, second opinion. Please, Dr. Melendez, we want whatever. We'll save our baby. Dr. Wright told us you've done fetal surgery to remove this type of tumor before. And without the tumor, our baby would be healthy. Your antiphospholipid syndrome makes a long surgery extremely dangerous. There's a high chance for blood clots, which could have fatal consequences for you. We're willing to take that risk. Saving the fetus doesn't do any good if the mother dies in the process. I've had three miscarriages. If I have to go through that again, I might as well be dead. Barb. It's true. No, it's not. You're the strongest woman I've ever met. We'll get through this. We will. And, and then we'll try again. We could manage clotting risk preoperatively with an infusion of unfractionated heparin. Never contradict me in front of a patient again. I didn't. I agree with your assessment of the risks. I suggested a way we could mitigate them. Not in front of the patient. We're not in front of the patient now. I was just reading about a new technique for transesophageal echocardiography monitoring. If there is a cardiac issue, it would give us an early warning. Let's get her prepped. ASAP.
I want JL on anesthesia. And let the neonatal nursing supervisor know that I want to do a full run through. Yes. But we're a little busy up here too. All right, I'll send someone. Andrews is covering for Lim in the ER. He's a patient who needs a boil lance. Classic surgeon can't lance a boil. Classic surgeons can, chief surgeons don't. You and Murphy. What? It was our ideas that convinced you to do the fetal surgery. Now you're punishing us with Andrew's scut work? We're well, not getting punished. He is, for being late, again. But I don't trust him alone with a patient. And since you like to defend him and seem to know how to communicate with him, hurry back. Olivia Hartman? Yes, ma'am. I mean, doctor. You're 18? Yes, ma'am. Where's the boil? It's, um, it's down there. Down where? Sean. It's, um, on her labia. Hmm. Is it painful? Like I used a bowling ball for a tampon. Okay, boil shouldn't hurt that much. Okay, if we take a look. Okay. If you just scoot down, put your feet in the stirrups. The swelling is fairly localized. Extreme pain that's out of proportion to the visible injury could mean you have necrotizing flesh-eating bacteria. What? I'm gonna use a heparin preoperatively and a TEE monitor. Still not enough. The risk of a heart attack or stroke was thoroughly explained. The patient still wants the surgery. She wants it or you want it. Yes. Saving a fetus's life would be good news for me. Any other questions or insults? Relax, I'm not insulting you. Of course you want to do the surgery. But you do surgeries like this, some patients are going to die. And then our department success rate goes down and then our funding goes down and then you can't do surgeries like this. So if your judgment is clouded in any way, just... It's not. Okay. Sorry, I know this hurts, but I really do need to insert the speculum for this part of the exam. If I really have what he says, does that mean you have to cut off? No, no. As I said, the abscess is most likely the result of an untreated chlamydia infection. We'll drain the abscess, give you antibiotics, you'll be fine. Ow! I'm sorry. The inflamed Bartolin gland is causing the ischiocavernosus muscle to spasm and pinch the labial nerve. You need to start with a more upward angle. Can I try? I think it's better if I do this. Ow! Okay, fine. Can we uh, call your parents? Let them know? No. I'm 18. I'm an adult. Even adults need emotional support. Someone to drive them home? After surgery? Uh, I'm gonna take a taxi. I have money. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. 25% of college students contract an STD before graduation. I'm not embarrassed. And I know all about STDs. I get tested every 30 days. There's no necrosis on the vaginal wall or cervix. You got it in already? Yes. It's definitely not flesh-eating bacteria. I was wrong. Thank God. You do need surgery to drain the Bartolin gland abscess. Why do you get an STD test every 30 days? I have to, for work. I do porn. <laughs>